I do a variety of trick shots, and then I do some stroke shots that are pretty talented shots, really spinning the ball. And then I'll probably do some jump shots, the shot that I revolutionized back in the 70s. Play some of the patrons a few games and see how they stand against me, give them the thrill of playing against a player like me and know what it feels like to play on, get on the table with me. Uh, that's pretty much it. Sign some autographs, take some pictures, be nice to the people. And try to make 14 balls in one shot on a bar table, which is difficult. 15 ball on the side, 7 ball on the side, 6 on the side, 9 on the side, 1 in the corner, 8 in the corner, 3 in the corner, 5 in the corner, 13 on the side, 12 on the side, 11 follows the 4 in, 2 follows the 14 in. Don't ask me to do that again. Everybody was on my side then because I was a new kid, you know. Earl this, Earl that. And then they said, Earl the Pearl. And that's how I got my name. And I'm the last player, I think, to my knowledge, that got named by the people. See, that was the way sports were years ago. The people named the player. Now the, people, the player named themselves. It, it, it ain't as traditional as it was when I came into the game. It's very traditional. Simple shot. I'm going to pocket three balls. The one ball here, the three ball, and the two ball. I want you to tell me which ball goes in first. That's all you got to do. Just like horse racing, okay? We call this shot the photo finish. I want you to tell me which ball goes in the pocket first. Very, very good. It's close, ain't it? You know, that three ball might have beat them that time. And the three ball is the furthest away. That's interesting, isn't it? My dad introduced me to pool in 1969. And uh, he wasn't that good a player, but he was real good friends with the guy that owned the pool room in town. And uh, once he introduced me to the game, I fell in love with it. And then he actually got me uh, in with the guy in the pool room because they were good friends from years ago. And he gave me a racking job in the pool room and that's really what got me started. Well, I was a natural. I was born with my ability, I think. Uh, because from the moment I started playing, it seemed like I progressed immediately. And by the time I was 12 or 13 years old, I could beat a road player. And that's unheard of, especially back then. There's some kids now that are kid wonders, but uh, I still say I'm the best kid wonder that ever played pool. I grew up in an era when there was a lot of gambling, and it was a different era, and you had to grow up quick. This is another shot that's not a trick shot. It's a stroke shot. I think the stroke shots to me are more fun to watch, even though they're hard to do. But what I'm gonna do this time is pocket the four ball in the corner, send the cue ball straight down the table to the bottom rail, around the nine and pocket the five in the side. I'm gonna try to pocket the seven ball in the corner. The cue ball goes to the side rail, the bottom rail around the one, the side rail around the three, down to the bottom rail around the two, side rail around the eight. There we go. I revolutionized this shot in tournament play in 1983 when I jumped the first ball on TV against Steve Miserak. And then that's when they started creating all the jump sticks. But I was the first one to really show the country this shot. Gambling years ago on the road, I'd jump a ball and a guy and he quit me just like that. Thought I was crazy. But anyway, this is my signature shot. It's one of my best shots ever, I think. I'm going to jump the nine ball, pocket the seven, draw back for position on the eight. Yeah. This is a draw shot. I'm going to pocket the nine ball in the corner. The cue ball goes to the side rail, 
bottom rail around the two, side rail around the eight, place position for the seven in the corner pocket on the bottom rail. I play with a Mike Golosi cue and uh, it really plays well and I'm playing well right now with it and I'm really happy with the cue. I like it because it deflects just right to me. Mike's a former player and he knows a lot about deflection. There's got to be a certain amount of deflection in a cue, but if there's too much then it can cause you to miss the shots with the spin more. And, and the cue deflects enough and it's built right, it, the weight and the size of the grip. There's a lot of little features about it that I really like. This is another shot. It's not a trick shot. It's a stroke shot. And like I said before, these are the most talented shots to me, not the trick shots. And what I'm going to do this time is pocket the five ball in the corner. The cue ball will go to the bottom rail, the side rail, around the one, come back and pocket the nine. I don't have to practice a lot. I'm a natural player, but I enjoy practicing. And I love keeping my game sharp. And uh, I think that's the key to being a great player. You gotta stay sharp all the time. Cause you gotta play eight or 10 matches to win a tournament. And, and winning one match and losing one ain't good enough. So yeah, I love practicing. I practice the trick shots. I practice a lot of things about pool. I still enjoy the game. I think I will until I die. There is one thing I gotta say before I shoot this shot about Michael Jordan and I. I was Air Strickland long before he was Air Jordan. <laughs> way before, I was way in the airways before he was jumping them balls, don't worry. But this shot's in honor of Michael Jordan, I call it the slam dunk. Oh yeah. Let me tell you where they're going. The two in the side, the seven in the corner, the eight in the corner, the one in the side, the three in this corner. I hope. There you go. You know, if I miss it, all I got to say is he got fouled. <laughs> well, I've won five United States Opens, which I'm most proud of, I think. It's very difficult to win a U.S. Open. Uh, it was hard for me to win my first one, and it would be hard for me to win my last one, I'm sure. I plan on winning another one. I've won six, uh, six world titles, and I uh, won five uh, Masters titles, which uh, were McDermott Masters used to be a major, but they, it doesn't, the tournament doesn't exist anymore. But I was proud of those, too. This is a shot I learned in the 70s. I saw a guy rolling them down the table shooting them in, but it's kind of like shooting skeet. So this is what I call shooting skeet on a pool table. I ain't quite as good as these as I used to be. Don't be afraid. The advice I could give a young player about playing pole is to stay healthy, first of all. Uh, I think your health is more important than anything. And if you stay healthy, you can play this game for a long time. Irvin Crane was a good example of that. I think he lived to be in his 90s, but he played good pole compared to the pole until he was in his 70s. And that's what I plan on doing. I want to be a good player still. And when I'm in my 60s, I want to be a threat to any guy any young player. I want him to know that he's going to have to play well to beat me even in my 60s, maybe even when I'm in my 70s. That's the best advice I could give a, a good young player. Stay healthy, get a hobby, and, and stay healthy, stay outside, and that'll help your pool game progress even better.
I'm going to try to jump the cue ball over the nine, pocket the seven, and draw back the position on the eight. This is a tough shot, ain't it, with that camera in front of me, too. But, let's see. Swing it, baby. I love you. I love that arm. <laughs> what an arm, huh? <laughs> a shot that we've all seen before. And where this shot was most famous for me is back in the 70s, I would walk into a bar and there'd be a guy shooting this shot with a stack of quarters this high and a beer, right? And I sat down, sat down at the bar and I'd watch this guy shoot this shot for four or five hours and he never could make it. This was one of Willie Moscone's famous shots. He used to shoot these shots on TV eons ago and people used to go to these little bars and practice them and they never could make them. I, I saw a lot of people shoot this shot and they never could make it. And I hope I can make it. It's not an easy shot, really. The three goes in the side, the five goes in the corner, the two goes in this side, and the four ball banks one rail. That's what makes this shot difficult, is getting this ball back down here in the corner. Willie Moscone was famous for this shot, really. So I'm gonna shoot this in honor of Willie. I never could figure out what he was thinking. You know, I never could get in his head, but maybe I didn't want to. <laughs> he didn't want to get in mine either. <laughs> I'm telling you, I tried to get, I tried to be pals with Willie. You couldn't get next to him. He was brutal. Nah, he was a great player. He's the guy I grew up uh, idolizing, I guess. All right, in honor of Willie, the old four ball shot. There we go, Willie. Thank you, Willie. I'm a real good teacher. A lot of people don't realize it, but I'm very good at teaching. I'm, I'm in good condition, and when you're in good condition, you can do things right. You know what I mean? You can come across the right way, and people like being around you, I think, when you're, you're positive. You know what I mean? That's the things I got going for me right now. I think I'm a, I'll be a lot better off in the next few years. I really do. It's probably one of the more difficult shots I'll ever do. And what I'm going to do is pocket the one ball in the corner, and the cue ball goes to the side rail, to the bottom rail, and avoids these balls, goes back to the side rail, and comes down in place position on the five ball here. Very, very difficult shot. I can't describe the difficulty of this shot, really. Beautiful. Good shot. This is a shot I practice once in a while. It's kind of unusual, but I'm trying to shoot real hard, make the ball, stop the ball, take another ball, shoot it with the opposite spin, stop it, take another ball, shoot it with the opposite spin, and stop it. First of all, you got to speed the game up. That's the first thing you got to do. Then you got to make the conditions where the lighting's better. You got to get the shadows off the balls. See, they, there's a lot uh, that's not being researched uh, about the lighting, the pockets, the heat of the table, and get it as accurate as we can get it to where the level of play can go up. We want the level of play to go up. Certainly we don't want the pocket six inches or five inches where nobody can miss. I think if you control the atmosphere around the table, you can make the pockets a lot smaller where you can equalize the table. But the lighting is one of the biggest issues to me. The lighting is not good in pull, ever. The shadows on the balls are not good. And then certainly we need money. There's other issues too. 
This shot is not a trick shot, it's a stroke shot, a very difficult shot. I'm going to try to pocket the eight ball, go to the side rail with the cue ball, to the bottom rail around the three, to the side rail around the four, to the bottom rail around the two. There it is. If I can stay healthy and keep the weight off of me, that's the key for me. And then I'll play for a long time. Hopefully my eyes will stay good. And I still haven't had the LASIK surgery yet, so I still got some other avenues to improve my game down the line. But staying healthy is the key. I think if I stay healthy, my eyes will stay healthy. It's, you know, it's, it's imperative at 49 now that I stay healthy. If I'm going to be playing when I'm 60 and 65 and 70 and still being competitive, i got to start. Well, I started years ago. I, I, I was doing this in my 20s, running and staying in good shape. I think it was a key to me winning a lot of majors. And when, at the U.S. Open, I used to get in so good a shape to play the U.S. Open. It was crazy. I, I, my game was always really sharp for that tournament. I think that's why I got five of them in 25 years. So... I won, you know, it's hard to win five tournaments in 25 years in anything, especially a major. So I plan on winning another one of those if I stay healthy, and uh, I plan on staying healthy. That's the key to me. But anyway, this shot was made famous by a pool player in the 70s, Steve Miserak. I used to compete against Steve Miserak. I'll tell you what, that guy was a great player. He really was. But he shot this shot in the 70s. He had a can of beer sitting here, a Miller Lite can. It was for Miller Lite. And he would make the seven in the side, the three in the side, the six in the side, the five in the corner, the one in the corner. The cue ball would go three cushions. As it went to get this ball, we would pick up that can of beer and say, just showing off by Miller Lite. And it would knock it in. It's a very famous commercial. It really was. It ran for a long time. This shot's in honor of Steve Miserak once more. It took him 383 tries. I hope it doesn't take me that many. <laughs> All right, Steve, one more time. Let me make this shot. One more time, Steve. Come on. I think pool's one of the greatest games ever invented. And it, it, <laughs> you know, I've been playing pool since 1969. For pool to go away and nothing else would be a crime. It really would. That's what I got to say. Pool's a great game and it deserves a chance. And it deserves a chance that all these other sports you see, racing and tennis and golf, but they're the same sports that I love. I love every other sport too, but I love this one more. What a great game it is. For them to, to desert this game and call me a hustler. Now that's a crime. And that's what I plan on doing. I want to be a good player still. When I'm in my 60s, I want to be a threat to any guy, any young player. I want to know that he's going to have to play well to beat me even in my 60s, maybe even when I'm in my 70s. Oh, the ball straight close has played an unbelievable five. Fair play, 61 years of age. It's five for USA. A lot of things about pool. I still enjoy the game. I think I will until I die.